Welcome to Fridays with Coco. Kind of crowded around here, don't you think? And I was just kind of fussing with my beautiful beads through the ecumenical prayer cycle. This week, we will pray for people who live in Sudan, South Sudan, and Uganda, right here in this area of Coco's Beach Ball Globe. Let's begin with a reading of Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 through 10. Dear friends, if you have detected that someone has gone astray, you who have received the Holy Spirit should restore such a one with a spirit of gentleness, being careful to not stray yourself. Share another's burdens, and in this way you will be complete in Christ's law of love. If you think that you are too good for that, then you have deceived yourself. Each of us must do our own work, so that our work, not our neighbors, is what we devote ourselves to doing. Those who have been taught well by a good teacher must share in all of those good things, becoming a teacher in turn. Do not be deceived or misled by your own actions, for God cannot be fooled, and each person will reap whatever they sow. If you sow selfishness, you will reap a crop of weeds, and weeds will be all that there is to show for your efforts. But the one who sows in response to God and allows the Holy Spirit to do the growing inside of you will reap eternal life from the Spirit. So let us not grow weary in doing what is right and good, for we will reap at harvest time when the time is right, if we do not give up. Whenever we have an opportunity let us work for the good of all. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You heard it here. We have heard, and we will tell the story. Coco's been spending, actually, I think almost two weeks getting ready for today. And although her visual isn't as large as sometimes, I'm sure her information and message will be quite great. The title of Coco's poem is A House Made of Pearl. It's often been said that if life gives you lemons, it's time to make lemonade. Perhaps you, like I, have other words to live by that also make the grade. Like if life gives you lemons, melt some butter to put on lobsters from the sea. Or, if life gives you lemons, plant the seeds and get ready for a whole new tree. It should go without saying that your perspective may differ from that of mine, which is why diversity and cultural differences help make our world be so fine. Here's a question, a bit of a riddle. What did the oyster say to the grain of sand? Hop on in. Together we'll make a precious pearl, a thing that's always in demand. Marine oysters and freshwater mussels make pearls as a natural defense when an irritant enters their shell, ending up covered by a substance hard and dense. The oyster or mussel slowly secretes multiple layers of conchiolin and aragonite, forming nacre or mother of pearl, causing the invader to give up any fight. Of all the birthstones, the only one created by a living creature is June's pearl. And make no mistake, a string of these looks just as good on a boy as a girl. If you can remember back to 1895, you're old. No, I mean 
Pearls were natural back then. A year later, cultured pearls were created. Now they're made again and again. Cleopatra bet Mark Antony she could come up with the most expensive dinner dish. She then dissolved a huge pearl in vinegar, which she drank and fulfilled her wish. Witnessed by Mark, who must have just rolled his eyes at yet another inventive plot, he had to admit that she won the bet. After all, she usually got whatever she sought. And this brings us to 1916 with Pierre Cartier and his wonderful New York store, which at that time was in a small building, but Pierre wanted much, much more. Then a young bride saw a million dollar pearl necklace she wanted in the worst way, and her husband traded it for a fifth Avenue Mansion, the store we know today. Thank you, as always, for all these things of information. And there she is talking about like strings of pearls when I have my, well, maybe a little, worth a little less than a million dollars. Today is the, I think, fifth video in this series that we are calling Friends of the Vine, with Jesus as the Vine, so that we might focus a little bit more on people who live in one of those countries that we always mention in the ecumenical prayer cycle. And so today, we're going to go right away to the BTW basket of Uganda foods, these beautiful pictures I have a feeling we're going to learn about the foods, but for sure, we will hear from the wonderful guests that Coco has invited. We begin with this picture of Sim Sim. Okay, and who are you? My name is Maxwell House. And I'm here to bring you, by the way, number one. I live in Vermont, where I not only like to cook and eat, but live near some place called Ben and Jerry's. My door is always open. And if you would like to come and visit, I'll take you to the Ben and Jerry's factory where you can take a tour and take a taste. I've always been interested in history and geography and have come to follow the people of Uganda who years ago were in the news a lot because there was so much political and governmental unrest. They sure have had it tough. And the AIDS epidemic has hit them hard and still does. But they've really made a lot of progress under new leadership. I'm sure we're all familiar with those words, you reap what you sow, which were words of St. Paul. The words are so famous that some think it was Shakespeare who coined them. When I hear those words from Galatians and hear how St. Paul tells us to not grow weary, I think I've had it pretty easy compared to the people of Uganda who have had to endure so much. How did St. Paul know that his words written so long ago would remain real, relevant, and necessary? Well, I'll tell you. It's because life has always had its struggles. 
but God promises to always be there for us. Do you remember how I told you that I love to cook and eat? I've learned to make Sim Sim, a Uganda dessert made with sugar and sesame seeds. Let me know if you want the recipe and I'd be happy to give it to you. And trust me, it goes well with Ben and Jerry's ice cream. And are you sitting down? Ben and Jerry's gets their vanilla from Uganda. I think the vanilla we have came from Madagascar, although that's not too far away. So maybe we'll look into some Uganda vanilla one of these days. Let's go on. By the way, number two. My name is Dan Folger, and I'm a faithful viewer of Coco's videos, and I have a love of waterfalls. A couple of weeks ago, Coco taught me a few things about Victoria Falls in Africa, which inspired me to look up some stuff about other waterfalls, like the Sippy Falls in Uganda, which is a series of three beautiful waterfalls. I'd like to visit them someday. That area is perfect for growing coffee because of the high altitude and the weather. The people of Uganda have been producing coffee for over 100 years, but troubles with the government prevented them from being able to sell it locally or internationally. You know what? The people persevered and are now able to thrive because of their patience and persistence. If you ask me, they have really reaped what they have sown. And remember, Paul told us how important it is to not grow weary. Although I have to admit, caffeine helps a little. Why not get some Uganda coffee and maybe while you're at it, get a recipe for Luwambo, which is a delicious stew made from chicken, beef, or fish and cooked in banana leaves. It looks rather hidden to me, but I'll just trust that this is really Luwambo. Thank you for that. Next we have, if my counting is correct, by the way, number three. My name is Pearl. Oh, I have my colored pearls on today. Go ahead. My name is Pearl Uban. Back in the fourth century, St. Ambrose said, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Wise words for the time. And it's probably still a good idea to explore the customs and traditions of places you visit. In that context, Rome could be anywhere, even Uganda, where people eat Rolex. That's right, they eat Rolex, not some kind of expensive watch that you would buy at a place like Cartier in New York, but a rolled up flatbread filled with eggs, onions, cabbage, kale, and sometimes ground meat. Sound like a good breakfast? It is, especially with delicious Uganda coffee. I guess when it comes right down to it, this is the kind of Rolex I would like to have because 
It provides sustenance, something we need for living in God's world. Did you hear that one little line in the Galatians reading about sharing another's burdens? There are many ways that you could look at this, especially when St. Paul warns us to not do things to puff up ourselves. In fact, it may be quite the opposite. If we are to be willing to help others, that means we must also be willing to accept the help of others. Maybe we're not so in control as we think. Remember that our help comes first from God and then from others. St. Paul tells us that just as we have been taught by good teachers, which includes Jesus, we are to become good teachers in turn. Speaking of Rolex, the watch kind, we don't need an expensive watch to tell us the time, for St. Paul assures us that God knows the right time to reap what has been sown. That is a sermon in itself, and it's filled with as much good stuff, including food, as the other two. How can we be at, by the way, number four already? Is that possible? They seem to think so. Okay, here we go. By the way, number four. My name is Katie Keurig, and with a name like Keurig, you might guess that I'm just destined to love coffee, and I do. I also love something called cardamom, which I first experienced in food of India and the Middle East, but it's also grown in Uganda and used to make a donut-like dessert called mandazi. If I have any pearl of wisdom for you today, it is this. Eat dessert first, no matter what anyone tells you. As far as I'm concerned, I'm the one who has my priorities straight. All kidding aside, St. Paul is not one to mince words, and the ones he uses are usually filled with pearls of wisdom. I'm pretty sure that when he talks about sharing the burdens of other people, he realizes that even in our ever-shrinking global community, we cannot be present everywhere in the world the way God is. But we can be there in prayer. We may pray for people who live anywhere, both for their needs and to give thanks for the things and the ways that they have instructed the world. I love what modern science tells us. I really trust that scientists have tested things and know what they're talking about, especially when I hear that eating dessert first, oh, there I go again, is something that assists with digestion. I think I need to make a few changes in my life, especially as we come out of this time of global pandemic. And I'm going to listen to what God tells me to do, beginning with St. Paul's words to the Galatians. By the way, number four, which means, my math is correct, we are up to, by the way, number five. 
My name is Gloria Jean. It sounds like everyone is talking about food, so I guess I will too. I have friends from my church who have visited Uganda around 10 years ago, and they came back with all kinds of interesting and wonderful recipes. And the foods often show up at a potluck supper. One of the ones I really like is matuki, which is a main dish made with cooked green bananas. Uganda grows more bananas than any other country for its country size. With its numerous national parks that contain a wide variety of animals, Uganda is a natural tourist destination. Tourism is a major part of the economy and ranked third after coffee and cotton. Under President Amin, however, tourism ceased and the national parks were neglected. Since the mid-1980s, tourism has had its ups and downs, but continues to now slowly be in the increase because of new leadership. I was born in the United States in the 1950s, and I sometimes wonder what my life would be like if I had been born somewhere else, like a place such as Uganda that has had so much struggle. As I understand it, about 85% of the population identifies as Christian, which means that well over 30 million people even in that small country of Uganda, have heard the same words of St. Paul that we heard today. Maybe we're all much closer than we think. I think we probably are, and I know in, in getting ready for, for today, Coco somehow took it upon herself to find some Uganda coffee, and on the label, it is saying that it is going to benefit something called the Bugizu Sippy Falls Project. And it's nice sometimes to purchase something in one part of the world, knowing that it directly benefits people in another part of the world. Sir Winston Churchill, not from Broward County, Florida, wrote a book back in 1908, and in it he wrote these words, for magnificence, for variety of form and color, for profusion of brilliant life, birds, insects, reptiles, and beasts for vast scale. Uganda is truly the pearl of Africa. He wrote these words when he visited Uganda during its years under British rule. Uganda embraces many ecosystems from the tall volcanic mountains of the eastern and western frontiers to densely forested swamps and rainforests on the country's central plateau. Maybe if you're planning to do some traveling when this whole pandemic thing pretty much goes away, you might consider going to Uganda. By the way, number six, we are often encouraged to read the Bible by trying to identify and relate to a character in a given story. 
Sometimes we can imagine ourselves being right there. Sometimes we imagine being something other than a human, like the dusty ground that gets trod upon, for sometimes in life we feel trod upon. Or the animals who were at the manger when Jesus was born, getting to see that amazing night, that very, very special time. We would like to offer the possibility that God, in this story that we heard today, that God is the sower and God is the reaper, and that we are the crop. Unless you have a green thumb, you understand how difficult it can be to keep some plants alive. But God has a way of knowing, like St. Paul wrote, when the time is right. God knew when the time was right for Jesus to walk upon the earth. God knew when the time was right for each of us to be born and where. And I believe that God has sown into us a kind of love that is just right for us, a God love that we can show to the world. The goodness that comes from this God love that is in us is the goodness that God reaps. And then there's the oyster. An oyster reaps what it doesn't sow. That grain of sand, that irritating invader. But God has an answer for that too. Just use a part of its amazing oysterness to craft an incredible pearl, something exquisite, something that is beautiful. Maybe all of us who can occasionally be like an annoying grain of sand are slowly being turned by God into an exquisite and wonderful and beautiful pearl. And as far as the lemons that make life's lemonades, well, maybe we should remember that we can also put that delicious lemon juice on the oyster once you've removed the pearl. For our time of meditation today, we're using music of Archangelo Corelli, and we've really enjoyed sharing this music of a Baroque Italian composer. Okay, one last look at that amazing pearl, unlike the ones around my neck. And, oh, there's Speedy. Speedy. Speaking of Speedy, this, this piece of music isn't Speedy. It's called Adagio. Adagio just means at ease. And this music has a, a very deep kind of sound and what we think of as an undulating kind of sound. There's kind of a heartbeat that just moves ever so gently. Okay, Speedy, keep an eye on things. Try not to slip and fall or do anything like that.
Hold your, hold your things. Close your eyes. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for Jesus, the true light and the true vine who connects us all. Those we know and those we have not met. As we show reverence for life and pray for all of your children and creatures, we give thanks that all of us are sisters and brothers, friends, as Jesus calls us friends. And we especially lift up those who live in Sudan, South Sudan, and Uganda, who you know each by name. In our mysterious pearliness, Help us to feel connected regardless of language differences or geographical distances. We especially give thanks to the people of Uganda who have shown so much strength in the midst of struggle that they are known as the Pearl of Africa. May we follow their example, knowing that we are all part of the same vine as we continue to live during this time of global pandemic, we lift up all with any health issues, all who are caregivers, and all who are transitioning from this life to the next, either alone or with loved ones. We give you thanks for giving us Jesus, by whose living, dying, and rising to new life assures us that we, too, are promised that new life. As faith-filled people, Fill us with your holy gifts of hope, peace, love, and joy. God, for all that has been, we say thanks. For all that will be, we say yes. And we say thanks and yes in the name of the one who gave himself completely for us, Jesus. Amen. Say amen. May God bless you today. Amen.